Turbocharger failures. Sometimes they are not as simple as one, two, three. Sometimes they get really, really tricky. Today we're gonna to delve into that. And today you are gonna learn something. Hello everybody, welcome back. Another YouTube video for you guys. This is gonna be a slightly technical one. It's a tricky technical one. We've got a client that sent us a failure and asked us to outline what the cause of failure or the failure mechanism was. Uh, I'm not gonna say what the turbocharger is or what vehicle it comes off um, for various reasons. However, it is a failure that it started happening on a fleet of vehicles and it was a little bit on the tricky side for the client to work out exactly what the cause of failure was. So we're gonna go into the specific failure and uh, we're gonna start talking about various things relating to this specific failure. But to start off with, turbocharger failures can be generally categorized into four main categories. Uh, otherwise known as the four big killers of turbochargers. So one would be lack of lubrication, one would be oil contamination, one would be excessive operating conditions, and one would be foreign object damage. Those are the four main causes of turbocharger failures. However, you get two, three, and up to four stage failures where you get a knock-on effect depending on where or what the failure mechanism the onset of the failure is or was so without further ado and without going too technical on the intro let's delve into the actual failure that we're here to talk about today right guys so here's the core assembly of the failed turbocharger and i have a separate compressor wheel with a progressive onset of the same turbocharger uh, model and make but obviously from a, a, a different turbo so we've got a number of these vehicles that are basically suffering the same failure and the guys are unable to pinpoint exactly what the problem is so the first most obvious thing is in the bearing system remember that's axial play that's radial play so there's no excessive axial play in actual fact there's hardly anything and there's no excessive radial play on this rotating assembly either. This turbocharger hasn't been disassembled. So the bearing system seems to be intact. Um, however, one of the blades has been bent backwards on the compressor wheel over there. Now, we've had a discussion with one of the other uh, subscribers a while back where a question was asked about whether or not a blade on a compressor is able to be bent backwards from normal operation. And I can confirm 100%, no, it's not possible. There would normally have to be impact onto the leading edge of the blade. This is the leading edge of the compressor wheel blade as it turns in that direction, clockwise direction while looking at the blade. That is the leading edge of the blade there. So in order for a blade to bend backwards like this, they would normally, note I say the word normally, have to be some form of impact damage on the leading edge of this blade in order for it to be forced backwards. The reason I say that is if you have a look at the angle of the blades, which I'll show you in a second, the, the angle of the actual leading edge of those blades in its direction of rotation is so sharp that it's almost impossible for that blade to basically just via airflow bend into the opposite direction. It's not gonna happen, guys. The manufacturers have taken that into account even in extreme, exceptional overboost or cyclic overspeed situations, the vibrations induced on these blades would actually cause a cyclic fatigue failure where the blade would bend backward and back and forth and eventually break off as opposed to bend. If the blade had gone and bent then 
it would basically minimize the effects of the cyclic fatigue or the, cy the, the fatigue based on cycles of the rotating compressor wheel. Have a look at the actual angle that I'm referring to. This is the angle in the line of the pen that I'm talking about. This specific turbocharger has bent a blade and in some other cases where the problem hasn't been addressed, a tip of the blade is actually broken off like this. In this specific case you find that the blade is, a tip of the blade is broken off. In most cases you will find one of the four big killers associated with the tips of compressor wheel blades breaking off and that would be excessive operating conditions, a cyclic overspeed. In other words if you overboost or overspeed a rotating compressor wheel you will find that the outside edges of the compressor blades will have the highest rim speed and at the same time the blade is at its thinnest at the edge of the outside diameter of the blade. At the same time you will find that always during a cyclic overspeed you will firstly, the first stage will be orange peel which you will find at the back disc. It will start to generate something called orange peel and if it's not addressed the blade or blades would actually break off just the tips and the easiest way to explain this is with a holographic photograph. On your screen now you will see a photograph of or a holographic photograph of a rotating compressor wheel at speed courtesy of Garrett or Honeywell and you will notice the dark discolorations on the edges um, or, the, or the corners of each blade which will indicate specifically vibration. Now it's irrelevant whether or not the vibration induced into each blade is equal in size but the fact of the matter is the holographic photograph in, indicates vibration induced into the blades during rotation. Now if you exceed a certain rotating speed or rotational speed you will find the blades will actually break off. That vibration is essentially bending of the blade obviously in a minute uh, uh, amount back and forth until such time that it creates a surface fracture on the actual blade and then from that fracture the, the uh, fracture or the crack will propagate, spread along the grain boundary. This gets technical so I'm going to keep it at a low level as, as far as I, can, I possibly can. It will actually spread across the grain boundary that the material is made of and eventually the blade will actually break off. Now in this specific case the blade is broken off but if we have a look at the back disc you are not seeing any orange peel. For those of you that don't know what orange peel is, if you get a really bad paint job and it looks like the surface of an orange, well obviously where the, the name comes from, orange peel, you would see that on the surface of the back disc. In this specific case it's still a clean surface with a machined appearance as opposed to that orange peel look. So there's no witness marks or indication that there's been a cyclic overspeed. So what is it? What is the problem? What has caused the issue? Well what we've done is we use what we call a stereograph which looks like a microscope except it gives you a 3D feedback and it allows you to zoom in. Now what we started looking for were signs behind the blade and this is what we found. If you have a look at the design of the compressor wheel which we'll put onto the screen shortly, you will see that it's a bullet machined wheel. So the wheel is actually, uh, the, the, the manufacturing process is they've taken a solid piece of aluminium and they've CNC machined the wheel, that piece of aluminium into a wheel. But what they've used is a technique called point milling. Now that means that the actual cutter, the point of the cutter, that looks similar to a drill but with a rounded face, is actually going to leave striations, machining marks into the actual surface of the blade across the entire surface of the blade, top of the blade and underneath the blade along the root, that's that conical shape of the actual root and the bottom of the blade, everything will have witness marks or striations bearing the pin point or the point milling uh, technique used in the CNC machining of the wheel. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like on the surface of the blade now. And if you have a look underneath the blade, you will see that 
there's witness marks of the point milling, which are quite evident toward the root, the center of the blade. And as you come to the outside of the blade, you'll notice that they disappear. So here is a close-up of the underside of the blade that is bent. And you'll notice that the striations toward the root, the center of the wheel, are still quite visible as opposed to the striations closer to the outside. So what I've just shown you now underneath the blade is the pin or the point milling striations, machining marks, which are quite prominent closer to the root, the center of the blade, as opposed to the outside. Now, let's just do a quick calculation to put this into perspective for you, and then I will reveal to you what the actual cause or the failure onset failure mechanism of this specific failure is. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna just take a vernier or caliper, as you guys call them overseas in the States, and I'm gonna measure the inducer blade diameter. I wanna just show you something. I'm gonna measure the inducer size, which in this specific case is 36 millimeters. I'll put this like that so you can see it clearly in the camera. Now, we're gonna do a little bit of maths. We're gonna work out what the rolling diameter of this compressor wheel is for one revolution, and then we're gonna multiply that by the speed that this turbocharger rotates at to calculate the rim speed in kilometers an hour. This is gonna be quite interesting. So you take 36 millimeters times pi, which is 3.142, and you will get a diameter of 113 millimeters. Now that's 113 millimeters if you take a point on the table or on a piece of paper and you rotate the blade once back to the same point and then you measure that distance. Now I'm gonna times that or multiply that by 120,000. That's what the rotating, normal operating rotational speed of this specific turbocharger is. And what we're gonna do is from there calculate what the kilometers an hour speed, or should I say the rim speed in kilometers an hour of the edge of these blades actually are. So guys, there's a couple of conversion apps or conversion websites, just type in mm slash uh, MIN minutes per minute to kilometers an hour KMH and you will find a conversion calculator on the actual web. Uh, just type it in Google and you guys will pick it up. The rim speed of this specific turbocharger is 814 kilometers an hour. It's probably just depending on the density, humidity, temperature, etc. is just under Mach 1. So you can understand it's almost breaking the speed of sound. Now let's delve a little bit more into the actual operating conditions, the environment that this specific turbocharger operates under. As most of you know, a turbocharger's compressor wheel is protected by only one thing, the air filter. So you have your air box with an air filter inside, the air gets drawn through the air filter, and the very next stop is the leading edge of the compressor wheel blades. Now, these blades are rotating at 120,000 RPM. We've just discovered that it's 814 kilometers an hour, any fine particle, and we're not talking about pieces of stone because that would be considered large particle. So we're talking about micron size particles, dust particles that the air filter will allow through will come into contact with the leading edge of the blades and obviously the underside of the blades. Now, it's important to note that any foreign body in particulate format or other, that's the key here, that comes into contact with these blades will erode, media blast, I say this in inverted commas because it's not actually media blasting, but the effects and the resultant surface finish under the blade is exactly the same as, as if you've gone and media blasted the wheel. And the erosion is the key in this specific instance because we have a breather on this specific engine which feeds directly from the tappet cover into the air intake tract, which then leads to the compressor wheel. Now, we are of the belief that the failure mechanism on this specific turbocharger is directly related to the breathing of the engine, which has changed the density. Now remember, breathing of an engine, depending on how severe it is, has got carbon content in the air. Carbon is extremely, erosive, it is extremely damaging 
to the surface of anything that comes into contact with it. As you know, diamonds are made from carbon. So how do we substantiate that? If we have a look at the surface of the compressor wheel, you'll find that in some cases you've got this black deposit on top of the wheel, but underneath it's clean. At the same time, we have this carbon deposit on the outskirts of this back plate area, but yet it's clean on this area here. So thanks to Bernoulli's, the Bernoulli effect, as velocity increases, pressure decreases. Where you have a low pressure area, you start getting a buildup, stagnation. So you'll get a buildup of carbon, which you'll find over here. And wherever you find a high velocity, wherever there's erosion, you will not find any buildup of carbon. And that is essentially what you see underneath the blade. So the blade has been eroded due to the impact of whatever materials or combination of materials, both the high density air, possibly, probably with carbon content in it, as well as the fine particles coming through the air filter that are contacting the underside of the blade. Now you'll find that the pictures we've shown before, as you extend to the outside of the blade underneath, you'll find that the striations or the point milling striations or witness marks have eroded away, more so at the edge of the blade, the higher rotational speeds, in comparison to closer to the root. I'm gonna do one last check and I'm gonna measure the thickness of the blade right at the tip, just to give you an idea of how thin the blade is after it has been eroded away. The thickness of this blade, as you can see in the screen now, is 0.3 of a millimeter. Now, that is extremely thin. Imagine a 0.3 millimeter piece of aluminum traveling at 814 kilometers an hour. It's not going to last very long. And the more the wheel cycles, the more it erodes underneath. And the easier it is, because of the increase in the density of air, because of the breathing from the engine, for that blade to now bend over. Now, either it's going to bend and break, or it's just going to break off completely. And that's what we're starting to find on these specific turbochargers. In this case over here, one of the blades is bent, as you can see there. And one of them is broken off completely. These are different phases of the same failure. Right guys, so I've tried to keep it, I've paused here and there to try and reword and think of a more layman explanation as to how I can get the point across with regards to the specific failure. I hope it's been informative. I hope you guys have learned something. And if there are any questions, post them down below. I'm excited to see uh, what you guys have got to say. If you, are, if, you, if you have any questions, put them down below. Let's interact. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and uh, we'll see you next time.